here. Hey guys, welcome to your weekly Team Perseverance team call. My name is Dave Atkins, one of your upline Star Diamond coaches and the founding coach of Team Perseverance. So we're here this week. We come together each week, and I know we always have new coaches that come on the call to go over news, announcements, have a training topic, and sometimes we get to have guest speakers on tonight, which I'm really excited about for my friend um, Pat to speak tonight. So guys, I'm going to get right into just a couple basic announcements since it's the beginning of the month, a little bit of recognition, um, and then turn it over to Patrick. So guys, first and foremost, the challenge packs on sale this month are size and max 30. Um, again, as you guys know, everything is in the back office. Another thing is, and I even got a text today from the app, Coach Summit um, still has hotel availability. And I know the Gaylord, where I stayed last year, which is Beautiful has availability, so rooms are opening up. Guys, I know there's a lot of people on the team still said they haven't got their room, so rooms have been opening up. Um, in terms of our challenge groups, um, this is the fourth week, as many of you guys know, so that means next week starts the challenge group as our team. We run them team-wide for the third week, third Monday of every month, so that is kicking off um, next week. So, guys, remember, this week, make sure you're following up. Make sure you're you know, following our system of Team Perseverance. Make sure that they've seen our video, the exit video, to invite them to join our team as coaches. And make sure you're using the scripts that we have had that are proven to work. And do not reinvent the wheel, guys. We've been through so much trial and error for the right script to work when we're inviting people, knowing what the objections are, knowing what the feedback's going to be. Again, it's under the Files tab of our Coaches of Team Perseverance page. Go on there. If you're still unsure, reach out to your coach, your upline diamond, your upline star diamond. I'm always here for you, but just keep it simple, okay? Don't overcomplicate this. So next, I just want to get into some quick recognition, guys. Um, as you know, we're really looking to really support those that are succeeding now in the leadership ladder and also weak leg team volume recognition, which, guys, I have to say, Patrick was – one of the reasons, one of the main reasons that we started recognizing weak leg team volume. So that just says a lot that now we have Patrick on the call. But um, I'm going to get right into and say these names quick and then um, get right into Patrick. So I, in terms of the leadership ladder for April, this is the first month we're really recognizing this. So in our business starters, we have Judy Mejia, Jean Marie Cregan, Jamie Weslick, Ashley Carlucci, Melanie Yoakum, Deidre Pashley, Tara Gusky, Stacey Ferrante, Kristen O'Dell, Michelle Broider, Kristen Smalls, Yvonne Richards, Maria Peterson, Marisa Ween, Anne Marie Pector, Rachel Rote, Tara Buzetta, Christiana Carino, Tracy Caschiano, Jenna Mastriani, Sahi Hemingway, and Sharon Osterum. In our business stars, guys, congratulations. And our team builders, Michelle De La Sala, Devon Wheaton, Jennifer Holdman, Janine Gershenhoff, Margaret Michelle, Darlene Champ, Mary Pasilia, Laura Schiller, Gina Strecco, Jay Fertillo, Lindsay Kaufman, Jessica Armstrong, and Greg Armstrong as our team builders. Team leaders, we have Kristen Atkins, Shanna Carlucci, Sharice Nolson, Stacey Lloris, and Shannon Lloris, husband and wife, team leaders. Myself as was the executive with an executive leader. Now, let me go in. Uh, the last photo, guys, is just the week leg team volume. Just want to recognize that, which ended, you know, last week for April 28th to May 4th. The 300 Club, Jenna Mastriani, Erin Darmody, Danielle Zito, Mary Pasilia, Michelle Fry, Shana Carlucci, Maureen Garrett, Kristen O'Dell, Ernie Della Vecchia, Elizabeth Mangione. Robin Reed, and Cindy Kerwin. In the 500 Club, Angela McLaughlin, Lindsay Medvin, Jay Fortiel, Lisa Marr, Devin Wheaton, Lindsay Kaufman, Rachel Rote, Gina Strecco, and Mike Della Sala. In the 1000 Club, Michelle Della Sala, Tony Carlucci, Kelly Della Vecchia, Mike Holdman, and my wife, Kristen Atkins. In the 2000 Club, my second CBC, Denise Bropson, Jen Holman, Liz Mullenbrook, Tara Richmond, Jeff Nolson, Shannon Larice, Sharice Nolson. In the 3000 Club, my wife Kristen in her first CBC, Shana Carlucci, Stacey Larice, and myself in the 10,000 Club. Now, guys, I want you guys to always know, I always say I am in the trenches with you each and every month. 
So I report my name so you guys know that each and every month I'm striving to hit Success Club. I'm striving to grow. I'm striving to hit the leadership ladder. I can tell you right now, guys, I am going through nose after nose after nose after nose for Success Club right now. I have two points. I invited about 50 people last week. I followed up with the 10. Just things like one guy called me. He was a, he's a doctor. He has a hernia now. Just things are happening. I'm getting not right now, not no. So I'm in the trenches with you, but I'm going to find a way. You know, it's the ninth of the month. If you dig down, guys, your willingness to accept diversity and overcome failure will be depend upon your success in this business. So, guys, without further ado, I want to get right into announcing Patrick on this call. I'm going to – let me make sure I spotlight him. There he is. So um, a couple things about Patrick. I met him at Leadership two years ago, I think through Chris Delestrito. They remember them saying, this guy is the team cycle bonus master, like two years ago, Pat. That's what they said about you. And I learned to become friends with Pat, another male elite coach. And this is just some of the stats on Pat, guys. I hope you guys have your pen and paper. He's a six-star in his first business center, a three-star diamond in his second, a one-star in his third, 40 months in a row in Success Club. His team is 3,000 coaches, over 3,000 coaches. He's a multiple six-figure earner, and he's a three-time elite coach. So without further ado, my boy, Patrick Reelman, the floor is yours. Thanks, Pat. <laughs> that was great. Uh, the first thing I got to say is, like, I love how you set up this call. I mean, you guys are already, like, recognizing the, the most important things with the, leak, the weak leg team volume, the leadership ladder. And I love that you're just keeping it simple and you're, you're talking about accepting the no's. You got to learn to love those no's, man. So you guys are, and I got to know David pretty well. And uh, so you guys, you guys are very lucky. I've, I've been around a lot of other teams and uh, I don't know if you guys know how well you guys have it. So uh, how about a round of applause for the man, David. So thanks for letting me be on the call. Uh, I'm, I'm like the same way, you know, like I'm definitely, you know, not the, the smartest kid in the world. I'm not tech savvy. This is all stuff I just kind of had to figure out as I went and try to make it as simple as possible because I'm a slow learner. So I had to make it very simple for me to understand it, which is why I've had a lot of success because, because of the fact that I'm a slow learner and I had to dummy it down for myself, I'm able to kind of give it to my coaches and keep it simple for them. So in this profession, it's kind of good to not be the smartest person in the world because <laughs> you got to do everything very simple which makes it very duplicatable, which, which is nice, right? So the, there's two things I always talk to my coaches about, especially the new coaches, but veterans too. The first is mindset, and then the second are the skills that you need to be successful. But for me, what I've found, it, it's 80% mindset, 20% skills. You could, be, you could have the skills nailed down, but if you don't have the right mindset, it's not going to work. The skills are things, like I said, that I'm able to do. So I think I could teach them to like an advanced eighth grader and they could figure those skills out and do what I'm doing every day. It's not rocket science. The, the hard part is getting the right mindset so that you stay consistent with those little simple skills long term. And, and I'll explain why it's so important that you stick, stay consistent with those things long term. So this is my big picture, the big picture with this business. And I got lucky enough, like, when I signed up as a coach, like we didn't, we didn't have success club back then. And I surrounded myself with a couple, so a couple older guys. I don't know if you guys have heard of them, Bob Lucido and Keith Callahan. And they always told me, they always told me like the secret to this business. And I'll, I'll tell you, but anytime someone comes to me and they go, Pat, like I want to build a six figure income with this business, or I want to build a team that's going to impact a ton of lives. I always tell them the same thing. It's, comes down to one thing, developing leaders. That was something that Bob Lucido and Keith Callen drilled into my head. Their thing was like five good, if you can find and develop five leaders, you're going to crush everything on your Y list and you're going to have a team that's going to impact so many more lives than you can on your own. So to me, I always had that big picture goal of develop a couple good leaders. Five would be great. But what I've noticed is once you get like two, your business explodes. It only takes two to really take this thing. Sometimes in some cases it's one, but I'm telling you like, that's, that's the secret to this thing. But those kind of people that you want, those leaders, they're usually not people on this. This isn't always the case, but they're usually people that need to sit back and watch you for a while. 
a year sometimes. It's just how they are. I was the same way. It, some people jump right into things, and those are usually people that jump right out and jump into something else. I'm not saying if there's anyone that's called that like jumped right in. Like I know a lot of I know coaches that have jumped right into things and have had success. But what I've noticed is the coaches that the people that had to sit back and watch me for a year, the longer they watched me, the more serious they took their business when they finally got on board. So if you want to find and develop those two or three rock star leaders that are going to take your business to a whole other level and make this thing so much more fun, you just got to understand that those people need to watch you for a long time. And why though? Like they need to see that you're real. They need to see that this business is real. You need to gain their credibility. You got to get credibility by showing up every single day on social media, sharing your journey every day. You got to be consistent with your own journey and sharing that every day so that they can see that and you can prove to them that you're serious and you're in this for the long haul and this thing's legit. And that's when you start to get those really good people on your team. One of my like top coaches happens to be my sister. <laughs> she's like number, I think she's in the top 50 in the whole company. And she wouldn't want to do this business until I was already making like over $1,000 a week with, with it. You know, like you just the longer you stay with it, the, the more you get those really high quality people that need to sit back and watch it's just how it works. So, but what happens to most coaches is they don't realize that and they come into this business and they're super excited and they're inviting like crazy and they're sharing their journey on social media and people are starting to watch them and they go, they like the first three months is great, right? Maybe they hit the success club the first three months and they get their free ticket to summit and all of a sudden the, their warm market's getting a little bit dry and they're getting a little bit more no's and they get discouraged and what do they do? They stop. They stop doing those little simple things. They let that, they let that discipline disappoint. They let that disappointment screw up their discipline. That's like one thing I had to learn to do is discipline my disappointment. And to me that means when you get, dis when you get disappointed, do you stay disciplined? And the, and the reason it's so important to stay disciplined when you get disappointed is because those people that you want on your team are watching. They might have not liked anything you've posted. They might not have commented on anything you've posted, but they have been watching. Especially the ones that told you no, they're watching even closer. So to me, a no is a great thing. To me, a no puts people on notice to watch me even closer. So that's just, that's the one thing that I, I'm trying to get that through my coach's head. When they, when they take that break because they're dis disappointed, they've lost all that credibility. All those people that were watching saw them quit. And they said to themselves, guess this thing wasn't real. Guess they're not serious. Good thing I didn't join them. And then let's say that new coach gets excited again and says, all right, I'm going to do it this time. It's going to take you a little bit longer to get that credibility back. You know, it's like the boy that cried wolf a little bit now. And I know from experience because my first four years, that's all I did. I cried wolf for four years straight. I'd get excited for three months and I'd get all pumped up and I'd even get a few coaches on board and then I'd get out. I don't know what would happen. Life got in the way or I'd get discouraged. It wasn't going as fast as I wanted, blah, 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 blah. Excuse, excuse, excuse. And I'd stop. And everyone that had been watching that was starting to kind of get interested, they saw me stop and they lost interest. And the coaches, a few coaches I had up with me, they saw me stop. So why, did they, why would they keep going? If the person that brought them in is not doing it, why would they? You know, it just doesn't make sense. So the, for any visual learners on the call, a couple of visual learners. So any of you guys try to run up an escalator that's going down when you're a kid? Anybody? Am I the only one? My mom would yell at me. Yeah. So th that's, this is like very much like this beach body business is like trying to run up an escalator that's going down that first year. So you're running, like you first get in and you're running full speed up this escalator and you're so excited, you're inviting and your business isn't quite moving as fast as you want because people are kind of like, what's this person doing? This, he's a coach now, I don't really get it. So they're not jumping on board right away. So even though you're running full speed, the, you're not making it up that escalator as fast as you want because they need to watch for a while because you're running uphill against the traffic, right? But you're still making progress because you're still running, you're still going. You're not going as fast as you, as you hope, but you're still making forward progress. 
Then you get to that four month mark, that five month mark, and all of a sudden you get that discouragement starts to kick in and you stop doing what you need to do because you're because you got disappointed and you didn't stay disciplined. And what happens on an escalator that's going down when you stop moving forward? You go all the way to the bottom. And all those people that were watching saw you stop, so you lost all that credibility. And then if you want to come back to this business, you gotta start at the bottom again. You don't get to start where you you don't get to start where you left off. You start at the very bottom. I did that to myself for four years. For four years. I kept going halfway up the escalator and then I'd stop and I'd go to the bottom. And all my coaches that were on the escalator with me saw that and then they would go to the bottom. For, and then I was watching these other coaches that started after me get on the escalator, stay consistent for a year, get the, the credibility, get people to join them on that journey. And they got to the top of the escalator where it was flat and they were running full speed and their businesses exploded. Meanwhile, I'm just sitting on the bottom half of this escalator going up and down, up and down. I finally got so pissed at myself. I said, I'm sick and tired of being on this up and down little escalator thing. I'm getting back on this escalator and I am not getting off this thing. I don't care how many no's I hear. I don't care how many coaches quit. I don't care how long it takes. I am going to find two or three really good people that believe in this as much as me, that want to impact as many lives as me, that want to create a six-figure income, more financial freedom in our lives as much as me. I know it's inevitable that if I stay on this escalator long enough and I, I stay consistent with my own journey and I share that journey with others, I know it's inevitable I'm going to find other people that want to be a part of that. I just know it. And once I went from having the mentality of I'm trying this thing out, I'm going to see how it works, people didn't want to be a part of something like that. I shifted to I'm doing this thing. I'm in this for the long haul. I'm not going anywhere. And if you want to join me, great. And if you don't, Great. It wasn't like I was desperate for anybody anymore. Nobody wants to be a part of a team where the person that's inviting them is trying this out and is desperate for other people. They want to be a part of something where this person's going to be successful with or without them and they're either going to join them and have success or get left behind. So that's the mentality you got to have on the escalator. Who's on, who's on that escalator right now? Who's been up and down it a few times? It's all right. I was on that thing up and down for four years. But what happened was once I changed that mentality and I stayed consistent with those little tiny things, those skills I'm going to talk to you guys about, the vital behaviors, people noticed it and they started getting on board and I eventually got to the top of that escalator with a bunch of other people that wanted to do this with me and that's when my business went to the moon, exploded because I wasn't running uphill against the traffic anymore. I had a, a team with me and we were running full speed on level ground at the top of that escalator and it was just like to the moon. Right. So why? Okay. So that's, that's great. It's good and all, but like, why, how come some coaches stay on the escalator and some don't? And, and that's what I, that was what I was always trying to figure out. How come some do and some don't? And it comes down to two things. The first is your why, how powerful is your why? And I don't even, I don't even call it a why I call it a why list. You can call it a why vision board. But for me, like the first thing I do with a new coach is I have them create, I, pull, I have them pull out a piece of paper and we start to create a why list from the small stuff to the big stuff. I had a coach tell me she wanted to afford the, uh, the Charmin softer toilet paper. I was like, add that shit to the list, you know? And then, you know, then it was like, I want to pay for my Shakeology. And then I want to be able to pay for my cell phone bill. I want to be able to pay part of my mortgage, you know, all the way up to the big stuff, but it started with the small and then everything in between. So they all, they had a ton of stuff that they were shooting for. You know, I call it Y fuel, you know, it's constantly and your Y tank. You got to constantly be fueling that, that, uh, that filling that Y tank up with your Y fuel. So I have them leave an empty space on the paper at the bottom so they can add stuff to it as things pop up because we all go through life and we see things on TV, our friends are doing things and, 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 just our, our natural reaction is, oh, that would be cool. I wish I could do that, but I can't right now. So I, I try to get them out of that mindset and instead say, oh, I can't do that right now, but I'm going to. I'm going to add that to my why list. And I'm going to let that fuel me. So then they're always, they always have that blank space at the bottom to add to that why list. So they're always adding to, they're adding to that why fuel which is important and have it, I have it, they put it somewhere, they see it every day. So they're constantly reminding themselves what they're shooting for. So they're refueling that tank, that wide tank. So that's the why I, and also like, so this is sometimes people, I don't like when I have a coach that says the only reason they're doing this is to build, to, to help people. I say, that's great. Like 
you have to have a genuine love for helping people to be successful with this business. You have to, but you don't have to have a business to help people. So why did you start a business? I try to get my coaches to, to understand that it's very important for them to, to know that having a personal part of their why that's personal to them and their family and their family's future is going to be vital to their why, because there's going to be days where you don't feel like just helping people. You're struggling on your own, but if part of your why is attached to your family's future and providing for your family or yourself or whatever it is, that's going to help you get on the computer and start to try to help people on the days you don't feel like it and make time on the days you don't have time. So that's the, that's the first part. The coaches that, are, that have that why, they're usually going to be able to stay on that, that escalator unless they're missing the second part, which is belief. The belief that the things that I'm telling them to do every day are actually going to get them everything on that why list. It's, a, it's, it's super important to have a great why list, a very powerful why list, but if you don't really believe the things you're doing every day are actually going to get you everything on that why list, you're probably not going to stay on that escalator. So the next thing I do is I try to help them strengthen their belief in this thing. And the way I do that is I reverse engineer it. So we know big picture what's going to really knock everything off that why list. It's going to be finding and developing a couple good leaders that can lock arms with you and really believe in this as much as you. If, you're, if you want people like that, you got to become someone like that. That's the other thing. It's going to be very hard to attract those leaders that just get it and are all in long term that want to be leaders of a team of their own. If you're not there yet, it's going to be very tough to attract those people. So you got to become that person. And that's not an easy thing, but it's, it's, it's a skill that you just read the right books, surround yourself with the right people. You can, anybody can do that. But okay, so that's the big picture. We know where that's going to come from. But where, where are those leaders usually going to come out of? Those, those people that really believe in what we do as coaches and this opportunity. Anybody want to guess? Challenge groups. They're going to come out of your challenge groups. And the reason they're going to come out of your challenge group is for two reasons, I believe. Those two or three leaders, those, those two or three rock stars are, that you want to lock arms with, there's two things they're going to learn in this challenge group that are vital to them being a successful coach. Number one, how amazing Beachbody's products are. The greatest products in the entire world, right? They work. Just like David was saying about your scripts, like these things are proven. They're not on trial. They work. But what's the problem? Most people don't use them. They don't stick with them. If they did, they would get amazing results. And that's why what we do as coaches and the experience we give people in our challenge groups is so vital. It's, so, it's also so vital that, that our coaches understand how important what we do is. We're the glue to this entire thing. The products are great, but if they don't have that coach and that experience, they're not going to stick with it. Maybe like 5% of them. And my goal, like when I'm, when I'm talking to someone about a challenge pack, they can tell that I don't give a, about $50 commission and I don't care about the two, the two successful points. And honestly, I don't even care. I care a little bit about them getting great 21 day before and after photos and 21 day results. But what I really care about is that they use these 21 days with my help to create some habits and break some bad ones so they can create a long-term sustainable, healthy lifestyle well beyond 21 days for the rest of their life. That is what these challenge groups are for. That is what these challenge packs are for. That is what us as coaches are for. It's to help people create long-term sustainable lifestyles for the rest of their life. And when, a, when someone comes out of my challenge group and they have that understanding of how amazing these products are and how important what we do as coaches are and what we're trying to really do, the big picture goal we're trying to do here, create long-term sustainable lifestyle, those are going to be so much more likely to be great coaches and be those two or three leaders you want on your team. So they're going to come from your challenge group. So running challenge groups is, is very important. And then, all right, so how do you get people into your challenge groups? I'm going to talk about that with uh, the vital behaviors, the five skills. But, but what I'm, before we go into the vital behaviors, the five skills, like 
it's really important to see exactly how those little things that we're telling you to do every day, those little skills we're telling you to do every day, how that's going to eventually get you to the challenge group participants and then how those challenge group participants are going to be those two or three leaders. And then once you have those two or three leaders, that's when the, the really cool stuff starts happening. And it's a matter of just doing those little things we're telling you to do every day, staying on that escalator for a full year. Sounds fun, right? Be on an escalator for a year. <laughs> it is fun. Especially when you got a bunch of other people that are, you guys are all on the escalator together, you know, supporting each other, pulling each other up when you need, when someone falls. That's the, that's the beauty of being on a team. All right. So before I jump into the skills, I, I want to touch on the vital behaviors. Because to me, the vital behaviors are like a little bit, because I told you I'm going to talk about two things, right? Mindset and skills. Those are the two things I always talk about. So mind, Long-term mindset, simple skills. Long-term mindset, simple skills. So kind of what bridges between, I've already hit on the mindset pretty hard. You guys understand it's the long-term mindset. It's the couple good leaders. You got to stay on that escalator, right? That's how you prove to these people that this thing's legit and that you're serious. So, but before I jump into the skills, there's kind of like one, the vital behaviors to me are kind of like the bridge between the mindset and the skills. They're kind of a little bit of both. So this is how I explain the vital behaviors to, to my coaches. You got the new one now, recognition, which I think is so important. And I think it's so vital to recognize your challengers and recognize your coaches and recognize your people in your free challenges or whatever. Just recognize every little thing. And I'm sure you guys do all that stuff. But what, what, I, also, what I also want you guys to do, I'm sure a lot of you guys are, are high achievers. Y'all are like perfectionists, a lot of you. Some of you are put so much pressure on yourselves and you never take the time to recognize yourself for doing a good job. And I'm not saying like be like boasty about it and post it publicly, but take time throughout the day when you do something well to just be still by yourself and kind of give yourself a pat on the back and recognize yourself just silently. Is that cool with you guys? <laughs> It's so hard to remember to do that as high achievers because we push ourselves perfection, perfection. But if you take the time to recognize yourself silently when you do, do something right, it reinforces that behavior. And you, and you just do more of those things that are paying off. Cool. So that's a great new addition, that rec the uh, recognition. The original three though, right? So you got inviting, you got personal development, proof the products work. I think that the most important one the probably the most important thing I'll tell you on this call is personal development. So the found, like I believe the number one vital behavior is personal development. That's the foundation along with being proof the products work. I believe that those two are the foundation of, of the business of the vital behaviors because the more you're taking care of your mind and taking care of your body, the easier it becomes to invite it just becomes more natural. You get, you just, it's, it's more fun. But you got to commit to those two vital behaviors, being proof to products work and personal development, not because you're doing a business, but because you want to be a badass. <laughs> you just want to, you want to go through life stronger mentally, physically, because it's fun. You're doing it for yourself. And people can tell a difference when you're just doing vital behaviors just because it's part of your business and you're doing it to be successful financially versus you're doing those things because you want to do them for yourself, regardless of the business. Watch what happens when you change the mentality of those two things, personal development and being proof the products work to just being about and being a badass and being the best version of yourself mentally and physically. The inviting becomes easier. People start becoming your way, but that's kind of how I explain the vital behaviors. So that's kind of the mindset, right? We got we really like now that one down. You guys had enough of that one. <laughs> So I want to jump into the five skills that, uh, that I think are vital. Um, number one is sharing your journey on social media. That means you have to have a journey to share. So we talked about that already. You know, that's part of the, you know, that, the vital behaviors, uh, being proof the products work, doing your personal development. That's your journey for you, for you, you know, that's going to help your business, but it's for you. So the number one skill, sharing that journey on social media, sharing it on social media. And, you know, it doesn't have to always be about Beachbody. 
You know, like I, and I never post anything that says, like I never take a stock photo that Beachbody uses and it says, here's the, the challenge pack that's on sale. Here's how much it costs. Here's a link to my website. I never say, hey, you go buy this. It's always, hey, I'm doing this. Who wants to do this together? Who wants to do this with me? And, and like, I'm like vulnerable about it too. I'm like, dude, like I've been off track. Like, man, I have been doing very bad with my food. <laughs> you know, and I could use some help right now. I could use some help staying accountable. Like who would want to help me with, with that? We can keep each other accountable. I think it'd be fun. You know, and I just throw that out there. And, uh, and then if people, whoever likes it, I just kind of reach out to them and say, Hey, so are you interested in, would you be interested in doing a 21 day challenge with me? I think it'd be fun to do together. So it's more like, Hey, I'm doing this. Let's do it together. It's not, Hey, you go do this. Right. Uh, along those lines with sharing your on social media, I think, you know, coaches are great at, being really excited, right? We're all super excited. We all, you know, we're, everything we post is all positive, positive, exciting, exciting, which is, which is great, right? But there's a lot of people that aren't there yet and they're just looking at you like, well, you know, like, what are you, are you on drugs or something? They, because they can't relate to it. They can't connect with it. So the, the way you can get them to first connect is to share what you didn't like about your life what you currently don't like about your life and then why you're excited about this opportunity because it's going to help you get over that thing you didn't like or things. If you, but you could go, if you just share the exciting stuff, no, you can't relate. If you share, if you take the time to first share what you didn't like, some of the little things, it doesn't be like a huge thing, just tiny little things, you know, like I posted something, I can't remember like a couple months ago, and uh, I posted a story about how when I was on the subway one time, because I used to be an accountant working in Boston, and I was on the, the train, and there's this guy next to me with his arm up, and he was like real tall, so my nose was in his armpit, and it just reeked. And I was like, I got to get out of it. You know, like, so I shared like what I didn't like about my, one of my just something silly. And, I, you know, so many people like related to that and connected with that, because there's a lot of people that, you know, they are commuting every day. And maybe they don't have a smelly armpit in their face, but you know, they can relate on some level. And then because they were able to relate with a struggle of mine, then they were more interested to hear how I kind of got out of the armpit, you know? So, but that's just a little thing. Don't be afraid to share your struggle. And in fact, it's really important that you do share those things. That's how you relate. Uh, I share like funny stuff on social media. I try to try to share things like, um, so those two or three leaders you want on your team, they're usually going to be people that have the same kind of sense of humor as you. So if you do something that's funny, post that, that funny stuff and attract those people that have the same sense of humor. Right. And you know, another thing I'll say is a lot of people, and I kind of did this at first, shame on me. A lot of people have like one or two people in their lives that they're afraid to post because of that one or those one or two people. Anyone can relate to that. There's like one or two people you have in mind that you're like, oh man, I, just, you know, I can't send it because so-and-so is going to say something. Or This is what I tell my coaches. And this is what I told myself. I said, who's going who's gonna to dictate your success in this business? Who, what's, I go, what's going to dictate your success in this business? Probably how much I share my journey so I can show to people how serious I am, right? So once I knew that, I go, who am I going to let dictate my future? Who am I going to let dictate my success in this business? Those one or two negative Nancy's that are going to say something or the thousands of people out there that would love to be invited to a challenge group, but no one's invited them yet. And would love to just be inspired and kind of follow my journey and maybe even join that journey. Who am I going to let decide my future? That one or two whack jobs or a couple thousand other people that really want to do something big. You know what, when I post something and if, if someone doesn't like it, like those one or two people, that's okay because I didn't post it for them. They can unfriend me and do me a favor. It's funny and the funny thing is, if you guys have anybody like that, which I did, the longer you stay on that escalator, they start to shut up and they just, they don't say anything. And then they even start asking questions about maybe even getting involved. And some of them I'm not on my team. Some of the biggest haters, all of a sudden, radio silence, then now they want to be on my team. How funny is that, right? But that's how it works. So, okay, that's number one, sharing your journey on social media. Number two, you got to be adding new people to your network each day. New, you got to be adding new people, connecting with new people each day. And 
what, what I see most coaches do is they sign up, they're a new coach and they start working with their warm market and they hit success club their first three months and they win their, their ticket to summit and they're all excited. And then month four comes around and I don't know, it's a little bit harder to hit success club now. And they start getting a little bit discouraged. They start kind of pulling back a little bit. There's escalators starting to bring them down a little bit. Right. So what I, tr I try to get my coaches to begin adding new people to their network from day one, even though like those people, you know, they're focused on their warm market right now with their challenge groups, but also make sure you're adding new people to your network because on month four, those people you added on day one for your new network, they're going to be watching you for three months with these challenges. And then hopefully by month four, four, they're ready or month five. Right. So that's what I'm always getting my coaches to add new people, add new people to their network each day. Not, and it's not like a numbers game. It's not like add 20 people. It's to me, it's like add two to five, like quality connections, quality over quantity. Right. Like, I don't know where you guys go to, to connect and find people. But for me, I just, I just use Facebook suggested friends. I use Facebook groups. I use uh, Instagram, you know, I search hashtags on there and I'm just I genuinely like if I go to someone's profile or our Instagram or Facebook and it's someone that I think to my, this is my test. My test is, is this someone whose posts I want to show up in my newsfeed? Do I want to see their posts? Do I want to see this person in my newsfeed? If it's no, then I just move on, you know, cause I'm not doing this for a numbers game. I'm not trying to just check off a box that says I connected with 10 people. I want to connect with quality people. So if they don't pass that test, I just move on. If they do pass the test, I reach out to them and I tell them what I like about their page, what caught my eye. And I ask them about that. So it's always one little compliment and a little question, but I'm doing that with like two to five new people each day, two to five. And then I just have a conversation with them about whatever we had a, a common interest in, whatever that, whatever that was, you know? And I'm pretty like, I'm pretty to the point. Like I'm, I'm like when, after the conversation has been going on for a little bit, like I don't, it doesn't go on for weeks before I invite him to a challenge group. Like if Will's having a conversation and I'll just say like, maybe it's stalled out or something. And I'll go back three days later and I'll, I'll say like, Hey, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to do one of my 21 day challenges, would you? And I'm sure you guys have like a great script that works. And I guarantee that in sales school, they don't teach you to say you wouldn't want to do this. Would you? probably not they probably teach you not to say that but that's what I say and it works you know like I'm I'm a very just kind of laid back like are you in or you're out if no it's not a big deal it's like I'm not gonna be upset but I think it'd be fun to do this together and uh, you know that's kind of my approach you wouldn't be interested in in uh, doing a 21 day challenge with me would you and I throw that out there like if, if you guys ever feel like you're afraid to just throw something like that out there because of whatever reason, what I, what I always tell myself is if I'm afraid to throw that out, that means that I'm in my head and I'm thinking about myself and I'm thinking about how I'm going to come off to other people versus being in my heart, coming from my heart and worrying about how I can help other people. Anytime I feel nervous or, or like hesitant to invite or connect with someone like that, it's because I'm thinking too much about how I'm going to come off to them instead of worrying about how I can help them, you know? So that's my thing. I just get over that. Go to, go from your head to your heart and just send it out there. Hey, you wouldn't be interested in doing a 21 day challenge with me. Would you, you never know if they say no, they say no, whatever. But if they say no, you planted a seed and now they're going to watch you even closer, which is great. Right? So that's my, uh, that's kind of my, my third step, which is inviting, you know? So we got number one, sharing your journey. Number two, finding and connecting with new people. Number three, inviting. So I follow a little, little five-step invite, probably similar years. Um, you know, that first one I told you. The second one is if they say, what is it? That's great. That's all I want them to ask. What is it? Or if they say, how much does it cost? I say, well, it depends. There's a few options. Do you mind if I ask you a couple questions first? Because if you just throw out the price right off the bat and they don't really realize what they're getting, it's gonna, it's not, they don't realize what they're, they're paying for. So that there's a very, very low perceived value. Because most of these people, they've tried a lot of diets. They've tried a lot of programs. So this is just one of those other things they're going to waste their money on. So I, I need to make sure that they understand this is very different than anything they've ever tried before. So before I tell them the price, I need to show that to them. Otherwise, they're not going to, their brain's not going to be able to make that number work for, that, for it, right? So if you, want, if you want that number to work for it, for the brain, you got to connect with a feeling, right? So 
So the third step, after the second step is, do you mind if I ask you a few questions because there's a few options? Then that third step is five questions that I ask them. Is this kind of similar? Do you guys do kind of something the same? Yeah, you, you get to that step where you ask them a bunch of questions, right? So this is, that's my favorite step because this is where we're starting to create a much higher perceived value of that $160 challenge pack, right? So <clears throat> I ask about their fitness goals, their nutrition. I ask about uh, their why. And I, and I say, what are your goals and why? Because I don't want to know that they want to lose 10 pounds. I want to know why they want to lose 10 pounds. I want to connect with a feeling. If they are, like if they're off track with the, the um, 21 day challenge, 21 day fix, we'll say, or if they're like on the fence about even doing it, even buying it, if it comes down to like, is it important to you to lose 10 pounds versus is it really important to you to lose 10 pounds so you have more energy so you can run around and be more present in your kids' lives? Now you're like, you're digging deeper. It's, it's always more than just, I want to lose 10 pounds or I want to lose 20 pounds. It's, but it's why. It's why they want to lose 10, 10 or 20 pounds. That's what you want to connect with. Same with, with a coach. You know, you want to connect with that why. So, and then the fourth step, I'm asking them, uh, how many times have you fell off a program that you've started? And they're always like, oh my God, you know, more than I can count. Right. The fifth one is, uh, have, do you think you'd benefit from being in a, in a group of positive people that are all starting the same program as you as the same day, supporting you every step of the way and have me as your coach supporting you as well, each step of the way. And now like, this is really the step where they're starting to understand that this is like, this is not like anything else that they've ever experienced before because they've never had me before. They've never had you guys before. We're the glue. We're the thing that everything else they've ever tried was missing from. And now they're starting to see that. So then when you get to that, the price, they're like 160 for this, that's it. <laughs> I mean, not every time, but more often than not, you know, like if, if, if as long as you're doing your job and, and showing them that you are not in this to just sell a challenge pack, your job is not to just sell that challenge pack and then they go off and do their thing. And if they can see that you really are going to, not just sell them a challenge pack, but then give it, get them in this group of other people that are going to run with them, support them and hold each other accountable. And you're going to be their coach and you're going to make it fun. And you're going to help them create a long-term sustainable lifestyle beyond the 21 days, which is part of the script too, letting them know what the real big picture is. That 160 doesn't become that big a deal. That 160 isn't about something they're going to try and then throw out. If, if that 160 is they're paying for a healthy lifestyle that's going to last the rest of their life and everything that comes along with that, the energy to be around their kids, to feel confident when they're looking at themselves naked in the mirror, whatever, you know, whatever gets them going. <laughs> so that to me is, uh, is huge. Like my, my tunnel vision that I give my coaches. So I'm, I'm a, like I said, I keep it simple. Mindset, 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 that, that big picture goal mindset. And then it's like, all right, Put your blinders on. There's going to be a lot of things that you're going to see other coaches talking about on national calls and all this stuff. Put your blinders on, and we're going to give you tunnel vision. Hashtag tunnel vision. I, I like using hashtags. It just kind of sinks, it, sinks in a little better. Hashtag tunnel vision. So what, what the tunnel vision, I give them one thing and one thing only to focus on as a new coach. And it's hashtag five best friends. Sounds funny, right? But what that means is their sole focus, their only thing they're focused on is – to help five people commit to their challenge group of the challenge pack. And those five people are going to be their best friends for that challenge for that whole month. They are going to get them in that group. They're going to get them to connect with each other. They're going to connect with them one-on-one. -on -one. They're going to make this the most amazing experience possible for them. That's, that's the goal. The funny thing is when you, when you have that mentality of that tunnel vision of my goal is five people a month to just love on and, and just give the best possible experience to, more people want to join your challenge groups. So you hit success club more often, right? And then the people that you're giving that amazing experience to, they're more likely to want to become a coach and give that experience to other people because they realize how important the products are and how important what we do and what the challenge is all about. So they're going to be more likely to become a coach. And when they become a coach, 
they're going to be a better coach because they're going to give that same experience that you gave them to their clients. So to me, the foundation of the business is that hashtag five best friends. How, how great of an experience are you giving your challengers? How, give, how great. And if, you do, and if you guys do big challenge groups, that's great. But then like with the people you're putting in those groups, maybe do a little side message with your, with your people or something like that. I don't know, you know? Like, but get their, I text all my people. I do voice text to all my people, you know? Um, and I can give you all, like, I'll give you all this stuff. I'll give you, you know, the 21 day fix script I use. I'll give you the, everything I post in my 21 day challenges. Uh, you know, it's all in a word. It's all in a Google doc, everything I post each day. One thing that really has helped participation just like go through the roof is I post every day. It says the day of the week. And it says uh, the, the day of the challenge. And it says, what was your workout today? So every day, everyone sees that, that photo and they comment with their workout each day. And I'm sure you guys do something like that. But then also, every day, there's a photo that has everyone's name and a number next to their name that represents how many times they've commented on that daily thread with their workout. So by the end of 21 days, everyone wants that 21 next to their name. And they're fighting and they're showing up every day to comment with their workout to make sure that their number next to their name doesn't drop crazy. <laughs> it's insane how much participation has gone through the roof ever since they've had a little number next to their name. So it's amazing how powerful a number is. Um, but yeah, so number one, like we said, sharing your journey. Number two, finding and connecting with new people. Three is inviting to the challenge groups. We talked about that. Four, not a shocker, give amazing 21 day experiences to your challengers. And uh, that's the foundation of the business, in my, in my opinion, I think. And then, then the, the fifth and final skill I teach my coaches is how, how do you enroll those challengers as coaches? How do you introduce the coaching opportunity to them, whether it's the discount or for the actual business opportunity? And I can share that, that uh, little script for, with you guys too. But that's, you know, that's it. Once I, once I get my coaches – locked in with that long-term mindset and then I get them comfortable with those skills, they're good to go. They're going to rock this thing. They're going to, they're going to attract more people to their challenge groups. Their challengers are going to have amazing experiences and they're going to be able to get some great coaches coming out of that, you know? And, and then sometimes where coaches get a little off is they're nervous to have coaches of their own because they don't really feel like they're ready to lead other coaches and teach other coaches. So what I tell my coaches that are at that stage I say, okay, are you comfortable with this skill? This, and I go all through all five of them. And, and I, I tell them to rank on a one to 10 where they feel they are on each of those five skills. And if they're at like a eight in all of them, then that's great. You know, if they're not, then we work on that skill and we figure out how to get better at that. But if they're at an eight or higher on all of them, then I go, okay, all you got to do now to help your coaches is just you're comfortable with these five skills. Now you just have to share how you do these skills with your coaches. Don't look around and think you got to do more than that. Just you're really good at these. Just share how you do these with your coaches and help them get comfortable. Just like you got comfortable with them. Don't think it's anything more than that. Cause it's not right. So it's, it's getting them, their coaches comfortable with those five skills. Also getting their coaches comfortable with the mindset. Obviously it's always those two things. If, if my coach is comfortable with that long-term mindset and that those simple skills and they just have that tunnel vision, they, 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 just, they crush it. You know, they stay on that escalator and they do really well. It's the ones that, you know, and then obviously no one's perfect. So when they fall off, I get on a call with them and I go, okay, like let's start from square one. What's your why? Remember those two things we talked about before the skills, your why and your belief. So what, let's talk, like read those, the why out loud. It's important to get your coaches to verbalize their why as much as possible. Read it out loud as much as possible because it makes it more powerful. And most people, like the only time they think about their why is when someone asks them what it is. I mean, I'm sure like David's why is on his mind 24, seven, 365, right? It's feeling them all the time, but most people, it's important to kind of remind them of why they're doing this, that why list, right? maybe things have changed a little bit. So you got to figure that out. And then the belief I always ask them is on a scale of one to 10, how inevitable is it that you are going to eventually inevitably find those two or three leaders that really want to lock arms with you and do this as much as you on a scale of one to 10. 
And, and I go, this is a judge free zone. There's no, it's not a test. Like where, where is your belief in that? And if it's at a five, then we work on it and we try to help them like understand that if they stay consistent with these little things each day, these little five skills, they're going to get people into the challenge groups that are going to have great experience. And it's inevitable that you're going to find some great coaches. It's inevitable. The only way you screw this thing up is if you stop, is if you take breaks. It's the only way you mess it up. No one's going to fire you, say you're doing a bad job. If that was the case, I would have got fired a million times my first four years because I was terrible, terrible. That's, and I'll tell you, like, I'm, all this stuff I'm telling you, and I'm sitting here and I'm talking about it and, and basically have it memorized and it works and everything, like, this isn't, like, how I started. When I first signed up as a coach, I wouldn't even get on the team calls because I was afraid they'd ask me to introduce myself and I'd like forget my name or something, you know? <laughs> this is just this is just from doing it over and over and personal development over and over and, and just figuring out what doesn't work and just staying on that escalator and just pushing forward and personal development, personal development, learning to work harder on yourself than you do on your business, learning to work harder on yourself than you do on anything else in life. I'm telling you, I'm, I am not a rocket science with any of this, this stuff. I don't, this is stuff that I was so bad at at first, but I just kept plugging along and kept plugging along. My, like there, when we were kids, when we were a baby and we tried to like get up from crawling and walk for the first time, we always fell, but we always got back up and we took another step and we fell and then we take two steps and we fell, we take three, we fell. But for whatever reason, like as adults, when we try something we've never done before, if we fall, which you will, then we don't like that. It's embarrassing. So then we just don't do it anymore. And we're like, I think I'm just going to crawl the rest of my life. You know, like that's not fun. So that's, that's all right. I'm done. I'm done. That's all I got. <laughs> Holy cow, dude. Uh, I got like a thousand nuggets of writing down. It's just, it's unbelievable. I'm looking forward to next week because we have our event on uh, Friday, Free Breaking Bread, right? Yeah, right. Friday? Yeah, right. Friday, yeah. Friday. We have the, for those that know on the team, the men's leadership events next week. And actually, Pat and I are both speaking at the men's event next week. So I'm pretty excited about that. Pat, I love, love, love the escalator analogy because I feel like so often I can name coaches presently that truly they start, they hit that three or four months, and they don't realize that. And team, I always say this you're not only affecting your own business internally by stopping, but everybody that was watching you, the belief that they have in you, like, oh, that person quit and they're not into it. I just think like that point is so powerful and you articulated so well. And I know the team can totally relate that. So thank you for explaining it the way you do, because I feel like that's a message that truly needs to come across. And the other thing I really love is your five questions, because I tell all the time, I think, and you probably agree, people get price objections. And I think most of the time you get price objections because we as coaches fail to provide the value of what in fact people are getting. And yeah. if we don't provide the value, then all of a sudden we're going to get the price objection. And, and I find that as you get better and you grow as a leader and you commit to personal development, you probably get less and less objections with price. You probably get less objections. We still get them, but not nearly as much as we were when we were new. And right, because you get better at creating that value. So I, I just absolutely love that. I love all your points. Definitely have to listen listen to this call again. But I want to see if anybody you have a minute to take a couple questions. See if anybody have any guys. Anybody um, questions for Pat? I think it was amazing. You guys, success leaves clues. I kid you not. And and Pat is somebody that I look up to. That I've asked questions to. That I've handed him over my volume of the team and said, Pat, am I doing the right thing with Kristen and I? Can you take a look at this? He's helped me many times. I look up to him. So this is your opportunity, guys. Anybody have any general questions they want to ask somebody? Um, you could put it in the chat. I can answer it that way and I can ask Pat for you or I'll mute your line. Anybody? I know we have some leaders in here, some star diamonds and some elite coaches. So guys, any questions? What is your favorite personal development book? Was that you that asked that, Pat? Oh, no, no, uh, no, Maria. What, what, what's put, your favorite PD book? I just put a link to like my. It's called Pat's Cheat Sheet. <laughs> it's my, it's a Google Doc. It's got um, it's got basically the things that I just went over today. Uh, it's that document. It's called Everything a New Coach Needs to Know, and it's got my 21 day script. It's got the uh, Challenger to Coach conversion script. 
Uh, it's got everything I post in my challenge groups and it's got everything I post in my like training groups. So Amazing. whatever you guys, like you guys, this is what I'll tell you. Like as like you guys are on a team that's like a well-oiled machine and he's got like scripts and things that work. Like the, the one thing that I don't like about having other successful coaches come on my, my calls, I love like the inspiration, but a lot of times like they do things a tiny bit different. It's really the same, but it's a little bit different. And then the, uh, some of the newer coaches are looking around thinking it's so different and they get confused which way to go and, th and they don't know what step to take and they don't take any steps. Like you guys have everything you need right here with David, you know, like he's got it all, it's all laid out. It's proven it works, you know? So I would just stick with that and then use like my stuff. You can just use as like a, maybe pull one thing out of it here and there, but don't think it's like they both work, you know, like, so that's all I would say. No, and thank you because guys, I've been there and like I, you have to take little nuggets and apply to what's working for you. So like Pat saying, you know, you wouldn't want to do this, would you? For me, that's a nugget for me of maybe how I can, you know, I always used to, I would say to you guys, one of the things I always say is, have you ever considered joining one of my groups? I make it out like they should know about it, but you wouldn't want to do this 21 day challenge, would you? That's a nugget. So there was hundreds of nuggets in there. So take a nugget, guys, and especially the newer coaches, don't get frazzled and think you got to do it differently. At the end of the day, focus on helping people, grow yourself as a person in development, and take the nuggets and take this stuff that Pat has shared with you and, and apply it. It's amazing. Any, uh, I'm going to just scroll. Anybody want to unmute or questions? I see some questions here. Let's, let's see. Uh, what is your favorite PD book? The first book, the first PD book I ever read, it, it was called The Slight Edge. That, that book completely changed my perspective on what it took to be successful. I used to think that success was something that uh, you were kind of like born with, like attributes. Or I, you know, I'd look at all these people and put them on pedestals and say, oh, that's great. They're successful. Like they have this and that and I don't have that. So I can't do what they do. I read that book and I realized that success is, is about just staying on an escalator for a year. <laughs> you know, like doing those unsexy things, those mundane things every day, whether you feel like it or not, making time, whether you have time or not for a full year, you know, then, and then those results start showing up that you can't see at the moment you're doing the activities. So that book was, that book was huge for me. It made me realize that I could do this business. It wasn't like I didn't have, it wasn't like I didn't have the skills. I could use the slight edge to develop those skills and it would take time, but it'd be worth it. Um, love your discipline, disappointment. Yeah, you, that's a big one. Learn to love your nose is a big one too. Know that a no means not yet. And uh, it's just like a, you planted a seed and they're going to come back around. They're going to watch you, which is why that escalator thing is so important. Um, we're going to venture into something. Uh, how do you organize? I use Google, I use Google Docs for everything. I use the Google uh, Sheet, the Google Word and the Google Sheet. As you'll see when you when you look at that link I sent you, that's how I, I have a one of my Google uh, sheets is like just called prospects where I keep a list of people's names and notes about what we talked about and when they want me to reach out to them again. How often do you do one on one calls with your with your leaders? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> um, <laughs> my leaders don't need me anymore. They're good. No. <laughs> uh, so I don't really have a set schedule. Uh, I do a diamond call every Wednesday with all the leaders. Um, that's not a one-on-one. -on -one. So as far as like one-on-one, -on -one, I text with them a lot. Um, I don't have like set calls I do with them. Uh, I, think, I think that's a great idea. Uh, one thing that I wish I was better at is I, you, tend to spend, you tend to spend time with the coaches that are struggling a lot because you think those are the ones that need your help the most. So that's where like 80% of your time goes where the coaches that are doing well on their own, you don't really spend a lot of time with them. But if you were to spend more time with those coaches, the synergy, the energy that would come off between you and that coach would be huge, you know, and you guys would both grow your businesses to a whole other, a whole other level that I think your time would be better spent there than trying to drag someone else along that would be draining your energy. So, but that doesn't really answer your question. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to come up with an answer now. <laughs> Cause I, cause I really, I should be doing that. Pat, uh, above, above that, uh, Sharice Nolson, who is actually an elite coach this past year, should tell me your top tips. Cause I know the building volume, how important that is. Uh, what, and not, you know, I don't need to have you do a hold on a list, but what are some of the things you focus on? Uh, okay. For, 
the weak leg team volume recognition is huge. Um, I would say one of the things I do to really help coaches understand what volume is, is especially if they've been a coach for a while and especially if they're like on one of my, like on a power leg where I'm like building, you know, a bunch of co putting coaches under them on one side, I, I bring them in there and I tell them like, Hey, look, like, and the first thing I say is I've never even, I didn't even know these people were, were here. Who, you know, who are these people? You guys with me? Is this over your head? What I'm talking about? A little bit. No. So like I go in there and I show them like they have one leg that's been growing like crazy. And I tell them that like every single one of these coaches benefits you every time they buy or sell something, it benefits your team bonus. And think of it as a bank account right now. Like you don't have another, the other leg that's, that's growing yet. So you can't benefit, you can't really benefit from all this volume that's happening, but it doesn't disappear. It just sits in a bank account and it waits for you and it grows and it grows and grows and no one else can touch it but you. And the only way you can touch it is by building that other side, by getting those one or two good people on that other side to start growing that. And they're like, so now it's not like they're starting from nothing and, and you know, they have something sitting there waiting for them that they're working towards. Does that make sense? I call it like, let's say your left leg is like super, like a strong leg. That's your left bank account. Or if it's your right leg that's way stronger than your other leg, that would be you have a right bank account that's sitting there waiting for you. It's kind of laughing at you like, hey, are you going to take advantage of me or are you just going to let me grow and forever? You know? So that's one thing I do. I kind of show them that, that the potential's there, sitting there waiting for them. Uh, the other thing I, I do is to, to help my volume would be I, I treat every coach on my team as, as if they were personally sponsored. I don't care if they're 10 levels deep or, or I personally sponsor them. If they want to build the business, I'm going to do what I can and give them the time that I can to help them be successful. The, the thing that is crazy is when you go deep in your organization and you work with coaches that are a few levels deep and you start to help them gain traction and their belief gets there and their why gets there and their five skills start kicking in and they start really seeing results, not only is it great for them and great for you because they're in your downline for your volume, but it really gets – all those other coaches that are in between you gets them really excited and they start putting more time into their business. So working with coaches that are deep in, in your organization, it, it benefits everybody all the way up that upline, including you. It really has a, a really cool ripple effect. So definitely treating, you know, everyone on the team equal, whether they're personally sponsored or non, that's, that's been huge. And what another thing I'll do that's really helped is when my new coach brings in a coach, their first coach of their own, I do the training call. I'll get on the call, the three of us. I want my coach to watch me train and, and then I want that watch me train their new coach. So that new coach gets a benefit because they're getting trained by a veteran coach and my coach benefits because they get to see me train this coach the same way that I trained them. So it's kind of the second time they're seeing it. And I do that a few times until my coach feels comfortable enough to do all their own trainings. And I, I, that's, that was, I did that when I was working full time, when I was working like five, 50 hours a week and I was really trying to make this business work. I would, you know, I hated it. Like I didn't want to do that. It was such, it was, it was like a, I had to work myself up energy up to go and train my coach's new coach, but I did it and it had a huge benefit on my business because now that second level was a lot stronger because I got trained by me. And my first level was stronger because I got to watch me train a coach again, which made them even stronger at training the next coach that they got. So that was, that was big. Uh, another little thing I do is I put coaches, like if I have coaches in my left leg that are kind of on that left power leg, I put them on a group message. I call them the lefties. And I say, all right, okay, guys, you guys are the lefties. Every time one of you guys puts a coach in the, in the bottom left leg, it benefits every single one of uh, everyone on this message. You guys are like team teamwork makes the dream work. So you guys are the lefties and you know, it's really cool. So then like when one of those coaches does sign a coach and puts them at the bottom left, they add that new coach to that group message and they're like, welcome to the lefties, you know, and they all get excited because they all know that's part of their left leg. And then when people were asking about who to stay with at summit, I was like, go to your lefty group and go to your righty group to figure out roommates. So not only, are they going to be able to find a roommate, which is nice, but they're going to be rooming with people that also benefit them financially too, because they're all in that same lefty or righty leg. So just little things like that. I could talk for hours on that stuff. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, anything else guys, before we wrap up, any other questions?
All right, guys, if there's no questions, Pat, thank you, my man. I really, really appreciate this. I look forward to hanging next week on the yeah. weekend, on Friday. I know the team was very appreciative. They're really excited. So thanks, brother. Again, I really appreciate it. Guys, have a great week. Make it an epic week. And we'll talk to you guys all soon. Pat, I'll see you next week. Later, bro. Right, thanks, Later, bye, guys. Later, bye, bye.